Hi there, everybody. My name is Adam Bushnell, and I'm the author. Um, thank you for that. A little bit of technical difficulty going on just a couple of moments ago, but thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me on day two of our storytelling live here on YouTube. Now, today I promised everybody a Viking myth. So, to that end, I've brought a Viking blowhorn. Vikings, as we know, did not wear horns on their helmets. They used horns for lots of different reasons. They used horns um, for drinking cups. They used horns that they boiled in water and then made little windows and lanterns out of them. They used combs um, made out of bone for their hair. They made bowls and little chess pieces and tools. But this is a Viking blowhorn. The sound comes out of that end. You blow into that end there. And what you have to do is imagine that you've got a seed or a pip inside your mouth and you're spitting it out, like when you're eating watermelon or something like that. So it kind of goes, ah, ah. that's the noise that we're aiming for. Would you like to hear it? I'm taking that as a yes. Okay, have a listen to this. That's how you blow a Viking blowhorn. Ready for our Viking myth here today. But first, before that, just want to share with you some of the things that people got in touch and shared with me after yesterday's broadcast. I've got here, um, on this clipboard, I've got some shout outs for later on. But before that, I've also got some um, ideas that people shared with me about dragons. Firstly, Thea from Hartlepool sent me her Fire Strike picture, and Fire Strike was an awesome name for a dragon. I love that. The Barker family um, over Darlington, they gave me a wonderful video of a dragon description. It was fantastic. Um, Layla Hawke sent me a beautiful dragon picture. Lin May, all the way over from China, she described her dragon as the Ice Queen. And Jack from Vietnam, described his dragon as Eyeball Popper. I love it. Now, Megan and Harry went looking for dragons and I saw some fantastic pictures of them all dressed up, looking for dragons. And um, there was also, got some pictures to show you actually. I've loaded them onto my iPad here. So I'm just hoping that this is going to work. Some incredible pictures. First of all, this one was drawn by Callum who's aged only five years old. And this was the dragon that he put together. I love it, I think it's fantastic. This dragon, that's like a purple queen of a dragon, loving that. Another icy one, like that one that we had in Vietnam. There's a brown dragon, breathing out some fire. Over here, we've got a very multicolored looking dragon. There's a dragon with a huge neck breathing out some fire. He's a blue dragon up in space. There's a beautiful colored dragon with a unicorn horn. A dragon with lots of spots, looking a bit grumpy. This is the love dragon, also known as the birthday dragon. I've got a beautiful multicolored one there. There's an action scene going on in that picture. We have another ice dragon walking over some uh, walking over some plains of ice. He is an eyeball dragon. Fantastic picture. Love that one. Over here, we've got a dragon breathing out some poisonous gases. We have a spotty dragon breathing out more fire. And then to finish off, this is a dragon from uh, a pupil at St. Aidan School in Hartlepool. And this dragon is breathing out some fire on, well, um, well, on me, actually. So thanks for that. I love it, love it, love it. I am so happy that yesterday's story inspired such incredible work and such incredible ideas at home and in school. So thank you very, very much for tuning in for day two of our storytelling. I'll have to work a dragon in here somewhere after the overwhelming response from yesterday. But this story today, this Viking myth, this is all about a boy called Askelad. Now, Askelad, in I think it's Norwegian, it means the ash lad, the boy who sits by the fire. And it's a little bit like if it was a story from England, if we might tell a story about Jack, like Jack and the Beanstalk, Jack the Giant Killer. 
There's lots and lots of Jack stories, and Jack was a Victorian, generic sort of a character where he was a bit of a Jack the lad. That's where that expression comes from. He's a bit of a lazy boy who just likes to sit around and not do much. And Askelad was the same, the ash lad, the one who sits by the fire. Now, Askelad was sitting by the fire, and he had a stick, and he was prodding the fire and moving the bits of ash and the little bits of crumbling coal from one side to another when his dad came up behind him and his dad said, Askeladd, you're such a lazy boy. All you want to do is sit by the fire and do not a lot. Tell you what I'd like you to do. Here is my knife. I'm going to give it to you and I would like you to take that knife and go off into the world and don't come back until you are a man. And Askeladd said, yeah, all right. So he took the knife and he wandered off outside and he wandered away. And as he came to a valley between the two hills, he saw a Viking dragon known as a worm. And this worm saw Askeladd approaching. It turned its great horned head towards him. Askeladd turned to walk in the other direction, but the worm shouted out, Oi, you! Askeladd looked around and said, The, the womb, the dragon said, yeah, you, come here, I want to talk to you. So Askeladd walked over. His hands were shaking. His knees were knocking. A little bit of wee came out. No, no, that actually, just his hands were shaking. His knees were knocking. He walked up to this womb. And as he stood there, the womb looked back and said, couldn't help noticing that you were holding a knife. Well, my friends and I, we have here a dead horse. And we were hoping to share it out between the three of us. But we keep on arguing with each other over which bit of the horse each of us should have. Now Askeladd looked and he saw that the wheel was with an eagle and a tiny beetle. So he looked at the dead horse, he looked at the wheel, the eagle and the beetle, and he had a little think. And he said, yeah, I think I can help you out. I'll use my dad's knife and chop up the horse and share it out between the three of you. So Askeladd went over, this bit's a bit gruesome, he cut off the horse's head. He cut off the horse's legs. And then he stepped back and he said, for the beetle, you get the head because you'll be able to climb all around in and out and inside of it. And I think you like doing that. For the eagle, you get the horse's legs because you're the most noble of the animals and you get the best bits. And for the womb, you get the body because you're the biggest and strongest of us all. Away you go. And so the three animals began to eat. And when the bones were picked clean and there was nothing left of their meal, they turned and they looked at Askeladd. But Askeladd was concerned. He'd snapped his father's knife while he was chopping up that horse. He sadly put the broken pieces to the ground. The weary said, well done, you've done very well there. But I couldn't help noticing that you broke your knife. I feel bad about that. So I am going to give you a magic power. I'm going to give you a superpower. Askeladd said, a superpower? Fantastic. Am I going to be able to run fast like the Flash? Or am I going to be super strong like the Hulk? Or, or, or turn invisible? Or, 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 or what's it going to be? The Weaver said, I'm going to give you the power of transmogrification. Askeladd said, that's fantastic. What is it? The Wyrm said, transmogrification means that you will be able to transmogrify. You will be able to transform. You will be able to change into a Wyrm, an eagle, or a beetle anytime you like. Askeladd said, cool. That sounds awesome. Now, what do we have to do? The Wyrm said, I need to breathe upon you. I need to breathe on your skin so that you may be able to change. Will it hurt? Asa asked Askeladd. The weary said, not a bit, hold still. Askeladd steadied himself. He closed his eyes and the weary released hot breath that covered his body. It felt sort of weird and tingly, but it didn't hurt. And when he finished, he said, so when will I be able to trans thingy thing thing anyway? You can transmogrify any time you like. Well done, my boy. Bye for now. The weary, the eagle and the beetle went off down the valley. And Askeladd, he carried on walking, trying to find his way, trying to find an adventure of some sort, another one after what had just happened to him. And as he was walking, he realised, why am I walking? If I can trans, if I can change into a weirman eagle or a beetle whenever I want, then I should be able to do that now.
he closed his eyes and imagined himself as an eagle. And as he opened his eyes, there he was. Ascalad was an eagle. He flapped his wings and soared off into the sky. He flew higher than the clouds. He flew faster than all the other birds. He soared over the land until at last he came to a palace. So he landed on a tree in the palace grounds and he folded up his wings and he settled to rest. Now inside of that palace was a princess. The princess was looking out of the window and when she saw Ascalad the eagle land on a tree, she thought to herself, what a beautiful animal. I'd like that animal as my pet for my bedroom. And so she went downstairs and she found a cage that was big enough and she ran outside and she crept up to the resting Ascalad. She grabbed hold of Ascalad the eagle, stuffed him into the cage and took the cage up to her bedroom. She set it down on a table. She said, I've always longed for an eagle as a pet. I shall go and get some meat from the kitchen to feed it. And off she went. Well, as soon as she went, Ascalad looked around the room and he didn't want to be stuffed into a cage this small. So he closed his eyes and imagined himself as a beetle. When he opened his eyes, there he was. Now Ascalad the beetle climbed out of the cage, ran along the table, down the table leg, onto the floor, closed his eyes once more, imagined himself as a boy. And there he stood. When the princess returned, holding a bowl of meat for the eagle, instead of there being an eagle in the cage, there stood Asgard. He looked at her and she looked at him and Asgard said, all right, love, you're very pretty. How are you doing? She said, what are you doing in my bedroom? Get out! And she had the king's guards throw him out of the palace. But while Asgard was being thrown beyond the gates of the palace, there was a loud booming sound. A booming sound that drew closer and closer and closer still. Asgard looked to see a giant striding across the land. The giant kicked at the palace gates, which flew open. The giant strode across the palace gardens. The guards all attacked, but he just swiped them all to one side, swatting them away as if they were flies. And then the giant walked straight over to the princess's bedroom. He made a fist and began to punch a hole through the wall of that palace. And then when the hole was big enough, he reached inside and grabbed hold of that princess. He then began to boom across the landscape once more, thundering away. Well, the guards were all chasing after him, but what were left of them were just swatted to one side once more. The giant's footsteps were so huge that nobody could keep up anyway. The king was so distressed. The king was shouting, who will save my daughter? Who will save my daughter? Well, Ascalad stepped over to the king. He stood like superhero stand and said, I will save your daughter, but I have superpowers. Ascalad then closed his eyes and imagined himself as an eagle. When he opened his eyes, there he was. So Ascalad the eagle flew off into the sky. He raced after that giant and just in time, the giant had made it over to a mountain range and had stepped inside a huge cave. The giant was rolling a great boulder over to the entrance of the cave to stop anybody from following, following him inside. Asgard the eagle landed on the ground just at the right time. He saw the giant had left a tiny gap. So Asgard the eagle closed his eyes and imagined himself as a beetle. When he opened his eyes, he was tiny and he could creep and crawl through that gap. Once inside the cave, he saw the giant had built a fire and had hooked a cauldron above the fire. The princess was about to be put into boiling water. She was going to be boiled alive. So Ascalad the beetle closed his eyes and he imagined himself as a worm, as a legless dragon. And when he opened his eyes, there he was. Ascalad the worm attacked the giant. The giant whirled around and began to punch and began to kick and began to headbutt. But Ascalad wove his way through those mighty blows. He sank his teeth into the giant and the giant fell down dead. Blech. Ascalad the worm then used his mighty strength to push the boulder to one side. Then he closed his eyes and imagined himself back as a boy. When he opened his eyes, there he was. He took the princess's hand and they walked the many miles back to the palace. The giant had covered those miles in moments, but Asgard and the princess, they took their time. Because as they walked, they talked. And as they talked, they fell in love with each other.
And by the time they got to the palace, marriage was all they could talk about. They asked the king if Ascalad and the princess could be married. And the king was delighted. A boy with superpowers to defend the kingdom as the husband of his daughter. The wedding was to be held the next day. So Ascalad raced home to his dad. He burst through the door and he said, well, dad, you sent me off to become a man. And that is what I am. I have superpowers. I saved a princess and I get to marry the princess tomorrow. We get to move into that palace. His dad said, where's my knife? Oh, dad, you're never happy, are you? I broke it, but I'll get you a thousand new knives. It doesn't matter. Come on, let's go. And so Askeladd and his dad moved into that palace. And as far as I know, from that day on, they lived happily ever after. I hope you like that story. We're not really able to go outside at the moment, are we? But that's why I like stories. That's why I love books. That's why I like writing and illustrating. Because when we do those things, we are transported to other worlds. Worlds where made up things like giants and dragons are just the norm. Made up things like being able to turn into different things. Superpowers, if you will. Let's talk about that transmogrification. If you could turn into any animal in the whole world, what would you turn into? Have a chat with your family on the sofa. Have a chat with the people sitting next to you at school. Have a chat with friends nearby. Which animal would you choose? But then there's a thing that authors do, which is called showing and not telling. Now, I was telling that story, and there's a difference between telling and describing. When I'm telling a story, there's not much description in it. When I'm writing a book where I want the reader to feel that they're really there, that's when I slow things down and I describe by showing certain things. For example, if I wanted you as a reader to guess what Ascalad was turning into, I might have described each different body part and how it changed. First of all, his ears began to fall off. After that, his eyes became yellow. Next, his nose stretched into a beak. After that, he began to grow feathers all over his body. Finally, he had become an eagle, that's right. Or if he was turning into the beetle, I might have said, starting with the facial features again, first of all, his hair began to fall out. Next, his ears tumbled to the floor. After that, his eyes became round, black and shiny. His mouth began to grow into a sort of mandible. His body began to shrink super small. His arms and his legs multiplied into six. Finally, he started to creep and crawl. He was the beetle, that's right. But you don't have to choose a weir an eagle or a beetle. What animal would you turn into? And then perhaps an activity that you could do after this story is that you maybe share ideas with your family. Describe how you turn into an animal. Describe what happens to your eyes, to your nose, to your mouth, to your ears. How do they change? Do they get bigger? Do they get smaller? Do they fall off? Are you now covered in stripes or spots or feathers or scales? Are you covered in fur and what colour is the fur? Describe it to each other and see if you can guess each other's animals, which could be an activity that you do, as I mentioned, later on today. I loved the activities that you did yesterday. I loved what you did with the dragons. So send me your animal transformation descriptions. Send me your pictures of you turning into an animal. When you become that animal, what are you going to do? As a monkey, are you going to start flinging yourself around your, your house looking for bananas? As a tiger, how are the people in your street going to react when they see from their windows you walking down the street as a tiger? What will happen in your house when you become that animal? What about the people in your family? What are they going to turn into and what's going to happen with this animal menagerie in your house? That could be something that we make up stories about today. Now, I have a great number of shout outs here. Don't forget, I'll be back here again tomorrow. And I think we might have an ancient Greek myth tomorrow. Not sure which one yet, but I'm, I'll have a think. So tomorrow, 2.30 on this YouTube channel, 
then we can uh, have our ancient Greek story. In the meantime, here's some shout outs for today. Shout out to Pontyland Primary School. Whoop! Shout out to St. Bennett's in Ooston. Shout out to Christian Quinn and all of Class 5 at Cathedral School in South London. Shout out to Grace and Martha Allen and everybody at Concert Infant School. Shout out to George and his mum, Charlie, who work who works at Durham Cathedral. In fact, shout out to the whole of the Durham Cathedral education team. Stay awesome. Shout out to Scarborough College, particularly to Year 2. Shout out to Jack and everybody at Chesley Street C of E School. Shout out to Nina in Year 5 at St Cuthbert's. Shout out to Reuben and Erin Jackson. Hi there, guys. Shout out to Woodley Primary School. Hello to you. Shout out to Sebastian Lewis in Stockton. Stay awesome. Shout out to From Wellgate Moor Primary School, just down the road from me. Hi there, guys. Shout out to Jacob from Leeds. How are you doing, buddy? Shout out, shout out to Jake Rush, Rochester from Washington. Hello to you. Shout out to Alfie from Langley Park. Shout out to Megan and Harry. Royalty. Shout out now to royalty. That's fantastic. Shouting out to Layla and all of year four from St. Joseph's in Stanley. And finally, shout out to everybody at Easington Colliery Primary School. So hello to all of you. If I haven't given you a shout out, it's because the messages that appear live all disappeared. You might have to put a comment on this video once it's been uploaded in about 10 minutes time. And then I'll make sure I go through those comments and I'll do plenty of shout outs tomorrow. But also ask your families to get in touch with me on Twitter, on Instagram, down as Author Adam. I can do shout outs there on Facebook as Adam Bushnell. Just get in touch, share your work with me, share um, your ideas for your stories, and I'll definitely get that shouted out. In the meantime, I just need you to stay positive, stay safe, and stay indoors. And that's why I'm taking you on this magical storytelling journey, because we're not going anywhere for a while, so we might as well make it as enjoyable as we possibly can. Um, fantastic to see you all again today. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can watch this video as many times as you want afterwards. So if you want to go through those different processes of transmogrification, then this video will be uploaded and you'll be able to go through it and share it with your family. Tell your friends. Let's get this video out to as many people as we can. Join me again tomorrow and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, everybody. Bye for now. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.